Welcome to the Indie Blog for March 2007, brought to you by IndieGate.com, the online independent music store. Before I get into this month's Indie Blog, I want to point out that there are some important safety tips that uh, you should be aware of when presenting a podcast. Warning, 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 warning. Safety content. Be sure to put on your protective gloves. Then, of course, you want to make sure you're wearing your safety goggles. Also essential is the proper protective headgear. And in order to stay hydrated, be sure that you have on hand plenty of frosty beverages. Equally important is, of course, the ever necessary New York Yankee style freezy mug in which to enjoy your frosty beverages. And of course, no podcast safety checklist would be complete without the most important ingredient, sponsorship. So make sure that you have a A mother mother huge sign to let everybody know the URL of your main sponsor, and then plug any other sponsor as best you can whenever possible. Having said all of that, it's time now for the March Indie Blog. So strap yourself in, sit back, and get ready, because here it comes. It's time for cool stuff. In this edition of the Indie Blog, we'll be talking about Dave Uosignan of the Hooters, his new website, vmix.com. You'll hear my rant. I'll speak about IMC events that are upcoming. We'll talk about the Indie Gate a little bit. But first, a word from our sponsor. Independent musicians, hey, it's Melissa here to let you know the Independent Music Conference is coming back to Philly for another year of great music, workshops, and networking. Get involved now by visiting their website. Get more info about the Independent Music Conference in the latest issue of the Intermix webzine. I want to see you at the Independent Music Conference, brought to you by IndieGate.com, the online independent music store. So get involved and let your music be heard through Philadelphia's Independent Music Conference. The IMC wants your submissions today. Okay, I want to start talking about some of the cool stuff that uh, I've got for you in this blog. Uh, starting with Dave Uosiknin, who is a member of the Hooters. You might remember them from the uh, early 80s. The Hooters were one of the original independent superstars. Back in the 80s, they released their very first album uh, as an independent release, and back then, they sold over 100,000 copies. Now, for a band to sell 100,000 copies on an independent basis, even today, is uh, freaking amazing. But this was 1980 we're talking about, and the Hooters managed to sell 100,000 copies of their CD all by themselves, which to me puts them in a league of their own in terms of being an independent success. Back then, uh, it was hard to stay independent, though, so the Hooters eventually signed with uh, a record label, and they started getting uh, major distribution and whatnot and touring like crazy and putting on incredibly awesome shows. Uh, They were well known for their live performances. And the name doesn't come from uh, a girl's anatomy. Uh, Hooters named their band after an instrument, otherwise known as the melodica. It's like a little keyboard that you blow through, and you play it almost like a an accordion-esque kind of an instrument. And uh, they used the Hooter quite a bit in some of their songs and gave them uh, a unique sound. Now, uh, as you can see from Command Center, Indie, IndieGate Command Center here, I've got the Hooter's website right here in the center screen. Um, Dave Uosignan, who's uh, on the far left, you saw his image earlier in the Indie blog, uh, has also become somewhat of a tech guru amongst the music industry uh, and was a key figure in mp3.com, Michael Robertson's website, which turned the music industry on its ear not too long ago. Uh, when mp3.com was purchased by Universal and then subsequently mothballed, uh, Dave was looking for a new place to apply his techie guru skills, and some of the other guys from mp3.com got together and they formed a website called vmix.com, which you can see right here on the left screen. And I also showed you that earlier in the blog with a screenshot. vmix.com started out as a video upload site. 
much like YouTube, which you probably are familiar with. But it's grown into much more than that. It has become what Dave refers to as a multi-platform distribution site. Uh, one of the coolest things about vmix.com is that they just landed a deal with the Tribune Company. Tribune Company is a hundred and some odd years old. It's one of the largest media companies in the country. They own the Chicago Tribune, the LA Times, a number of radio stations, TV stations. They're a massive media outlet and they have hired vmix.com to provide what uh, Dave refers to as vmix core and that is a back-end system that will provide all of the uh, techie guru stuff for Tribune's web presence their video blogging, their uploads, their web, you know, the message boards, anything along those lines, vMix will be powering that for Tribune from now on. That's going to make the rest of the year quite interesting as we watch vMix's progress because I think that puts it in the running with a, a huge monster like YouTube. Um, it's going to provide a lot of uh, capital for sure for vMix.com, which means that on the front end, in terms of their new music uh, wing, which Dave is very proudly uh, the head of, uh, they're going to be able to provide a lot more services for musicians in terms of uploading their music. Uh, they have a new uh, feature where you can actually record your video blog right into your vMix account. They are working on ways to create more uh, possibilities for the musicians who upload their music and videos to vMix.com. Uh, they're also working on a message board and a blogging setup. So they're turning it into a community. So it's going to have the best of all possible worlds. It's going to be sort of like a MySpace, a, a YouTube, and an MP3.com all rolled into one. I'm looking for great things from vmix.com. And I know Dave, and Dave wouldn't be involved with something unless it was awesome. And he's a very capable guy. So I'm sure that with him at the head of the music department at vmix.com, we have an awful lot of really cool things to look forward to. Uh, I'm going to uh, move into talking a little bit about um, the IMC events, but first, it's time for my rant. This month's rant has to do with the WWW, and I know you're thinking I am referring to the World Wide Web, but I'm actually talking about the Wild Wild West, or maybe it's the Wild Wild Web, I don't know. But it just seems to me that you have to arm your avatar with a six-shooter these days just to survive on the web. It's getting so crazy, it's ridiculous. And what's with all this spam? I mean, for God's sake, if I have to hear from the dying man, woman, child, dog who's suffering from cancer, leukemia, tuberculosis, painful gout, or terminal bad breath, and wants to leave me 25 million pounds, dollars, yen, drachma, shekels, uh, and all I need to do is send them an email with my you know, name, social security number, uh, visa card number, uh, expiration date, secret code, um, bank account number, uh, the size of my, uh, you know what I'm saying. I, I, it's ridiculous. I have to delete thousands of these things now. It's just getting so out of hand. I don't know if it's a computer somewhere in Croatia that is sending out all the spam and it just keeps repeating itself over and over again, but I get so many of these things a day now that are identical. I have to wonder, how you know, where is it all coming from? These people can't possibly be expecting that somebody's going to respond to it if they hammer them a million times with the same thing. Oh, maybe if I send it to them another